Can the 2019 MacBook Air really handle all your gaming needs? In today's video, we're diving into this sleek and stylish laptop to see if it can keep up with the demands of modern games. Spoiler alert, you might be surprised. Stick around as we put this beauty to the ultimate test. Let's get started. This laptop isn't just a powerhouse, it's a beauty to behold. With its sleek lightweight design and premium finish, it's perfect for any setting, whether you're in a cafe, at the office or on the go. Let's dive into what makes this machine a showstopper, starting with its speakers. The speakers of this MacBook sound in short just amazing. Having the volume at half, I still felt like they were so loud I should turn it off to not disturb the neighbors. Which does mean it's a perfect moment to subscribe to the channel and like this video. This MacBook Air from 2019 really shows off its beautiful Retina display with amazing viewing angles and very strong brightness as well. Sitting outside to work with this laptop is no issue at all. The keyboard has a good feel and nice click to it, however, the key travel is very little making it something to have to get used to. However, the click here is very satisfying and amazing that this was achieved in such a thin design. Next to the keyboard we have a speaker on both sides. The speaker space is quite big, but the speaker behind is actually fairly small, but has plenty of space for air displacement making the deep bass quite possible, as you can see in the little picture here. But as this laptop is very thin and small, it does mean there's basically no ports on this. On the right side we just have a headphone jack connection, whilst on the other side there's two USB-C ports of which you can use both to plug in the power adapter, which will also be USB-C. Also on this laptop the Apple logo will actually not light up, which is something I really miss from the older models. Here you can see it next to the MacBook Air from 2017, of which I made a video in the past that I will link here on the screen. You can see a clear height difference in these laptops, even though the screen on the model from 2019 is slightly bigger as it is a 16x10 format. On the right side you can also see the colors are less vibrant as this isn't a retina display like the one of the 2019 model. The trackpad of the 2019 model is a tiny bit bigger than the one of the 2017 model. Also when you see them like this, honestly yeah, the one from 2019 looks a lot better than the one from 2017 if you ask me. Height wise there isn't that much difference between the two if you put them next to each other like this. I do think that the space grey makes the laptop look fancier than it actually is also. This is one of the first times that I see a clear difference in the design made by Apple. It kind of feels like going from the iPhone 8 to the iPhone 10. Here suddenly the button was gone, the screen was bigger and it looked overall a lot nicer. Kind of like these laptops. But hey, that is enough chit chat about the design. Let's have a look at the specs of the machine. This exact model comes with a 13 inch screen and houses an Intel Core i5-8210Y processor. This is merely a 1.6 GHz dual core, so don't expect too much here. Next to that, this model comes with 16 GB of LDDR3 memory running at 2133 MHz. The graphics card isn't dedicated in this laptop, meaning that we have an Intel UHD 617 graphics card, which is unfortunately not that strong, as you will see later on in a bit. Then moving on to the storage, we have 500GB SSD in this laptop. This is actually soldered to the motherboard, making it not possible to upgrade. So when you buy a laptop, make sure you have sufficient storage from the get-go. The resolution of this screen is 2560 by 1600, which is really a lot for the graphics card once we're inside games. So you will always see that you need to put the resolution down a lot to be able to run with decent frames. But hey, let's check it out. Can it actually game? I thought I would start off with Fortnite, a very popular game that I myself enjoy a lot playing on Xbox, PC or laptop. However, after the download was done and installation was completed, I wanted to start the game. This actually meant that I landed in the queue and no matter how long you wait, you just don't pass at this anymore. It seems that this game is no longer supported on Mac as I could find on forums online. Does any of you know how to play this on Mac? Just let me know please in the comments. Then moving on to Counter Strike 2, which I downloaded and was actually quite playable, with everything on low and a resolution of 1440x900. Whenever I started the game it did tell me I was gonna load legacy mode, so maybe this is actually Counter Strike Go, but who knows. It was playable, but not the best experience I must admit. I would say here it was around 40 frames per second, so I wanted to make some nice footage for all of you, where I really showcase how good I am and definitely not a noob, I thought it would be best to play against bots on easy. Shh, don't tell anyone please. In short, you can see that the internal graphics cards really can't hold up in games, let alone with the retina resolution. However, when you downgrade the resolution by quite a bit, you can actually manage to play quite some games. For example, playing Roblox, Minecraft, League of Legends or Terraria, it is perfectly fine, you can see here on the screen. But once you try to start something like Call of Duty Warzone, you'll be in for a PowerPoint slideshow, as you might get below 5 frames per second if it isn't even less, and if it even loads. But hey, when you buy a laptop like this, you probably are going to use it to study or to work on, and not to game on. 
I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments what you thought and if you want me to improve anything. Talk to you all later. Bye bye.